Okay, so we're back for the third part of the notes here. So we're on the last page, section four, properties of functions. So what we're going to do this time, in number four, it says graph f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. Now that's the same thing as y equals. So it's really just an equation. On the coordinate plane below, and then list the following properties. So we're going to graph this and then we're going to write down domain, range, the intercepts, and the zeros. So there are a couple ways that you can graph. Um, probably the easiest is with the calculator, but let's say we don't have that. What we can do is we can pick a set of points. We're going to make a table here of points of x's and y's. We're going to make a table of x's and y's. When you plug in an x value in a function, you always get a y value. So we want to plug in some points and try to figure out um, what the shape of this curve is going to be. So some easy points to plug in. Let's start with uh, zero. Zero is probably the easiest number that you can plug in. So if we put a zero into the function, that means that for all these x's, we're going to put zeros in. So we would do, I'm going to do it over here. So x is zero. And the y value would be 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 8. All we're doing is putting zeros into these positions. Now, 0 times anything is 0, so we end up with negative 8. Okay, so on our graph, 0, negative 8 is right here. All right, let's plug in 1. 1 is an easy number to deal with. So if x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 8. So that would be 1. This would be minus 2 minus 8. And what we'll get for that is negative 9. Now that actually puts us a little bit off the graph. So it's 1 comma negative 9. I'll just put a space down here. Now let's see what happens at 2. We plug in 2. So if x equals 2, okay, I'm kind of running out of space here, we get y equals, it's 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 8. This would be 4 minus 4, which is 0, minus 8 equals negative 8. So 2 comma negative 8. So that's there. Um, let's plug in a negative 1. So y equals it would be negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 8. When you square a negative, it's positive. Negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2 minus 8. And what we get is negative 5. So negative 1, negative 5 is here. If we plug in a 3, we would also get negative 5 for that. 3 comma negative 5. So you start to see the shape. This is going to be what we call a parabola. Now we can keep going, but to save us a little time, let's get a few more points. On the calculator, we can go to y equals, and we can graph x squared minus 2x minus 8. And if we go zoom standard, zoom 6, there's the shape of our graph. That's a parabola right there. Um, so it looks like we've got the first part of it. Let's plot a few more points. So let's go to the table, which is second and graph. And this gives us a whole bunch of points. 0, negative 8 is an ordered pair. 1, negative 9, 2, negative 8, 3, negative 5, 4, 0, 5, 7. Let's, let's plot 4, comma, 0 here, and then 5, comma, 7, like that. And then let's go a few negative values for x. So when x is negative 2, y is 0, and when x is negative 3, y is 7. Okay, so there's the shape, so we can connect that, and what we have here is a parabola. Now the domain, if you keep going to the left, notice the arrow means this function is going to keep going left, and it's not going to stop. You could plug in negative 7 for x and get a y value. You could plug in negative 15. You could plug in negative 1 million. So the domain is going to keep going to the left, 
but at the same time, it's going to also keep going to the right. So the domain is all real numbers. And again, you could write that as negative infinity to positive infinity. That's the interval right there. So negative infinity is just all the way to the left. Positive infinity is you keep going to the right. Now the range is lowest to highest. Domain is x's, range is y's. Range is lowest to highest. Now in this case, we come down. We hit this point, which is called a minimum. That's the lowest point. We turn and we come back up. So we actually have a lowest value. It was down here when, x is, when y is negative 9. So the range, we're going to say all real numbers greater than or equal to, because it's going to keep going up, greater than or equal to negative 9. Now, if you want to write it as an interval, you could write negative 9 with a bracket, because that's an actual point on the curve. And then how high are we going to go? Positive infinity. So we're going to go up to positive infinity for that. You could also write it as an inequality. You could say y greater than or equal to negative 9. So I'm showing you a bunch of different ways here that you can write this information down. Okay, so you can choose which way is easiest for you. X-intercepts, that's where you cross the x-axis or touch the x-axis. Now in this case, here's the x-axis, here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. We cross, we touch in two places. This is negative 2 comma 0 and positive 4 comma 0. Now those are also what we call the zeros. The x-intercepts are actually the same as the zeros. x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 4. So zeros and x-intercepts basically mean the same thing. The y-intercepts are where we cross or touch the y-axis. So in this case, on the y-axis, it's down here. That was at 0, negative 8. So the y-intercepts are 0, whoops, negative 8. 0, negative 8. Okay? So those are some of the, the properties that we're going to deal with when we talk about functions. For the last, last one here, number 5, the graph of g of x is below. Now, they don't give us any kind of equation. They just say, hey, this right here, we're going to call that g of x. Now, just like the parabola that we did, what was the name of that? f of x. So you could use any letter. You could use h of x. You could use j of x. You could basically use whatever you want. So the graph of g of x is below. List the following properties. Okay, domain. Domain is x's. So from left to right, well, this arrow is going to keep going to the left, so that goes to negative infinity. And this arrow is going to keep going to the right, so we're going to just say all real numbers. Okay, I'll just write it out. The range is the y values, lowest to highest. How low are we going to go for the y values? Well, the arrows are going to keep going down, so as they go down, that's going to hit every single y value. Now we do have a highest point though, that's as high as we get, and that's at positive 4. The y value is positive 4. So we can say all real numbers less than or equal to 4. Okay, and you can write it in words if you want, less than or equal to. X-intercepts or zeros, well, it looks like touch in two places. That's negative 6 comma 0, that's the ordered pair, and this is 3 comma 0. Those are on the x-axis. The y-intercept is right here, that's at positive 2, so 0 comma 2, 0 comma 2. Now the last part of this, they want us to actually evaluate our function here. Um, now it says f, these say f, they should really say g because g is the name of the function. Um, 
So actually, to make it easier, I'm going to call this f of x. So sorry about the mistake there. f of negative 3 equals question mark. These are the x values. So they're telling us x is negative 3. They're asking us what would be the y value. Well, we're going to use the graph to match this. So instead of plugging this into some kind of equation or expression, what we're going to do is use the graph to figure it out. So I'm going to go to x equals negative 3. Notice that when x is negative 3, there is a point. There's going to be a point with that value right here. Now the question is, what's the y value? Well, the y value is 4. So f of negative 3 is equal to 4. That's my answer. So you're just looking at the point. Negative 3 comma 4, the y value is 4. f of 6 equals question mark. When x is 6, what is the y value? So we're going to go over to 6 for the x-axis. Now notice, I'd have to go down here to get to the point. There's my point. What's the y value? Negative 2. f of negative 6 equals question mark. So when x is negative 6, what is the y value? So we'll go over to negative 6, that's left. Now that puts you right on the x-axis. The y value there is 0. So we actually already found that because that was an x-intercept. Now this one here, f of question mark is equal to 4. This time they give us the y value and they're asking what's the x value. So we're going to work kind of backwards this time. Instead of starting on the x-axis, we're going to start with the y-axis. Okay, so when y is 4, when y is 4, now if I'm, I'm going to look across here, here's my point, what's the x value? Oh, the x value is negative 3. So it's actually, it's the same question as this first one right here. Um, we're just starting with different information. Here they give you x and they say find y. Here they give you y and they say find x. Now the last one, f of question mark equals 2. So again, the y value is 2. What's the x value? When the y value is 2, okay, I'm looking across. Well, it looks like we actually have two points. We have here and we have here. So I'm going to have two answers here. Now the x value of this point, well, we're going to have to estimate because it's between negative 5 and negative 4. Let's say negative 4.5, okay, is 1 estimation, so the x value there is negative 4.5. Now for this point, the x value is, well, that's 0. That's 0 comma 2, so the x value is 0. And that is the end of the notes.